Hello everyone, and welcome to the Monza Grand Prix with literally no drag. So I had this idea then, as a Monza Italian Grand Prix is of course the temple of speed, it's the highest speed F1 track, I thought, I wonder what would happen if F1 cars defied the laws of physics and had literally no drag at all. So no matter how fast they go, there's no wind resistance at all against the car. Just to see how fast they go, just to see how we get on. So I've modified the F1 2019 game uh, to take away all of the drag. There's probably still a bit of rolling resistance. The cars do slow down when I back of the throttle. So there's probably uh, some resistance from the tyres, that sort of thing. Um, then just, I've just adjusted the gear ratios just to make sure that we're not topping out of gear, the uh, gear ratios too early. And uh, yeah, this is how I got on. So here we go then on the grid for our very first no drag race. We've got three lights, four lights, five lights. We are starting from the very back of the grid as Charles Leclerc. And away we go then. So, of course, we're not going to see any difference initially. It's only when we start to build up speed that we're going to start to notice that there's no drag. And look at that. Look at the speed in the bottom right. Already at 350 kilometers an hour before we hit the brakes. And actually brake really late and end up having a bit of a crash. And there's absolute carnage ahead of us. Completely blocked track. We go across the... Across the curbs here, bouncing across, and actually end up all the way up in P6. So, not much of a race start, so I think we'll uh, we'll give that one another go. That was a bit too much. I want to try and get at least through the first turn. Clearly, the AI there struggling with the brakes as well. So, here we go then. Five lights. Long, long wait, and we're away, finally. And once again, from the back of the grid. It's interesting as well, because the car's exactly the same. It feels identical. This is actually the most interesting mod that I've done um, since the... Well, all the ones I've tried, this is definitely more interesting. And actually, we have to get squeezed to the outside because they're so slow for the first turn. Um, and yeah, it's, it's the most interesting because it just feels exactly the same. The car's the exact same. You've got the same amount of downforce. The brakes are the same. The only difference is you're going a bit quicker. Um, so I did find it really interesting. And actually, I think I've somehow forgotten to mod the Haas cars or that there's the, the certainly some sort of glitch with them. As we end up bre out breaking ourselves hugely, we forget to factor in the additional speed coming into the second chicane there and ended up flying into people. But we're carrying anyway. We'll use this as a bit of a practice run, I think. And uh, again, these corners are very similar to how they are anyway because you have that much more speed. Get up to 280 kilometers an hour before we hit the brakes there, which is a bit more than normal, but not excessively so. Now, this is where we can really start to build up the speed. 320, 350, 380, 400 kilometers an hour, 420, 430, 40, 50, 450 kilometers an hour. And once again, I'll break myself there. Just no chance. I'm just trying to adjust to the braking zones, but I'm going over 100 kilometers an hour quicker than I've ever gone coming into that turn. So it's really hard to adjust my brain to how early I need to break. Once again, 440, for almost 450 kilometers an hour. And once again, our apologies. Our apologies to Antonio Giovinazzi. That uh, wasn't the plan. And luckily, we end up not getting hit as we come straight back onto the racing line. Didn't have a lot of control. Another thing I found interesting as well is that the Urz deployment, you see it's just adjusting it there. We can actually run overtake Urz, the full Urz deployment the whole time. I think it's a combination of the fact that and again, just trying to get it slowed down. There's absolutely no chance of that. That was uh, pretty much breaking at the normal point, which just doesn't work at all with the extra overspeed. And uh, yeah, we can actually fully deploy ours. I think it's a combination of the fact that the straights are, are actually shorter. You're on full throttle for less time because you get the straight down quicker. Um, and a combination, of course, that you're braking for a lot longer, so you get a lot more deployment. So I'm able to run a uh, full ours mode as we give this another go then. And that was after that little practice run. And uh, it's already some carnage on the outside, but luckily it's been to the outside, not the inside. So we can get through nice and cleanly. Up to P18 already then. Up for the gears, you can see us running rich and high deployment. I do work out later on I can run overtake mode, which is absolutely full beans from the airs. And once again, oh, we get squeezed onto the grass there. The hard's getting in the way a little bit there and all over the shop. We managed to make it work. And Cubits has a nice spin just to block. Uh, I think it was Grosjean there in front of us, so enabled us to go around the outside nice and easy. Up to P15 now. Need to try and catch the cars up ahead if we can, all over the kerb. And, of course, just trying to adjust to this. But these corners are quite similar, but I'm also not that well rehearsed on this particular track. Up for the gears. So we're totally on our own now. Let's see what sort of speeds we can get. Of course, there is no such thing as slipstream. DRS is also completely pointless. Both of the things only ever reduce your drag. And we actually managed to make that apex for once as Hamilton stuck on the inside there. I think the AI, uh, they, they adjust pretty well, considering how much quicker we're going. They actually adjust pretty well. And we've got Magazine up ahead once again, not being modified, unfortunately. It's a little something's gone wrong with his mod. And uh, trying to get all slowed down, which we managed to do again. And yet, the AI actually uh, adapt pretty well. I was surprised at how well they do adapt. They, of course, have some issues. They run too wide, and then they're, they're way too courteous. They just wait off the track, waiting for everyone to clear. Uh, the rule is that you do have to rejoin safely when you leave the track. But uh, 
Yeah, they uh, they, <laughs> they wait a little bit too much. We see someone on the outside there. Who is that's gone wide? Toro Rosso, I think it is. It is Nikvia, and just waiting there for everyone to go past. Gassi there again, a little bit cautious back on the power, but can we get past him? Just sneaking up to the inside all over the grass. Bit of oversteer, but we managed to make that work just about over 400 kilometers now once again. And I'm starting to learn my braking points here, little by little. I can see them running wide. And yeah, just going back to the AI, they are a bit cautious, but they do outbreak themselves a lot, but not they, if they braked at the normal point they would do what you saw me do in the first race they'd fly off the track so they are braking really quite a lot earlier but of course you know they're not designed to handle speeds of 450 480 kilometers an hour so understandable that of course they do struggle a little bit really but i was quite impressed as i normally am actually they adapt surprisingly well they must be well coded as we've got absolute carnage ahead of us once again then oh and actually carla signs Speaking about rejoining the track quite safe or overly cautious by the AI, decides to just reverse straight on back onto the racing line with a load of cars behind him, which I don't think is very realistic. But uh, anyway, that puts us back down to P10 then. And we've got a few cars up ahead of us. We should be able to get the move stick on, make move stick on a few of those. And they all run wide, look, but this corner of the braking zone is not quite big enough. So they do, uh, do manage to get it slowed down in time, even if they don't hit their apex, as R1 has a bit of an engine issue there, which is surprising. They do, of course, have damage off and rules for off. As Magnussen there, and oh, Perez, wow, that was very, very tight. Actually, really good defending, to be honest with you, Perez there. And Magnussen will have to give him a bit of room, of course. He's not got the mod, so he will be always hitting his breaking zone. And in fact, I'm surprised we'd see the Haas is winning, got uh, Magnussen up in fourth. But I do believe, though, that the the issues that AI are having only actually happens um, when I'm there. And uh, on to the last half of the race in first position. And I included this just because the race rest was a bit boring. So I thought there's no point showing that, but I just thought I'd show that just because imagine that happening. Imagine a dominant car going around the final turn and running wide and skimming the barrier and then uh, having almost a half spin and then coming across the line the win. How entertaining that would be and how shocking. But anyway, this is our final, final go then. This is the closest I got to an actual genuine race with the, uh, the AI struggling with the extra speed they've got. Pretty good start once again. Where are the Hazes? Oh, so that's Groja. Oh, Magnus is just next to him there. So again, though, look, just falling back on the start. I I can't work out if I've not modified their drag by accident or if their gear ratios are not modified. I think it's their drag, um, but they probably got longer gears. So they're actually a bit slower. But actually, interesting. Look now, look, Grosjean on the exits, the same, the same, the same. And now it's only now when the drag starts to build up that we just fly past him. By the end of the straights, we're hugely faster as Russell backs out of it for some reason there. We fly around his outside and getting it all slowed down a little bit deep, but no, that's okay. We managed to make that work just about leaving Russell a little bit room on the outside because he decided to have a look, didn't want to push him off. And uh, we'll give you up next is Magnus in there. Look, again, holding his own at the moment with the rest of the no, uh, low drag cars. You know, he has got drag, but I expect we'll absolutely fly past him on this straight. Give you going to go for it on the outside of the next turn, as are we, I think. Yes, oh, a little bit tight, but we managed to make it stick nicely. Give you up, we have a look at the inside, but no. Don't quite manage to make that stick, of course. Don't forget, oh, wow, <laughs> before I get on to that point, just absolute carnage in Iskari. Not sure what was going on there. We only gained a couple of positions from that. We can fly in at pretty much full racing speed, and everyone's just stopped. We had no chance of avoiding that, but uh, managed to get through anyway. And uh, I've completely forgot what my point is. That's good fun for everyone involved. I've got, uh, nope, no idea what that point was. Never mind, we'll um, sure remember it a little bit later on. But anyway, then. We've got Antonio Giovinazzi up ahead, up into P14 at the moment. Again, I, it's just instinctive to be behind him, and he backs out of it again for some reason there. We fly around his uh, our opposite side, if you can call it that, along the straight. And everyone, once again, just running deep all over the track. And we managed to go around the outside and up to P6 already. Bit of a shame they do that, to be honest with you. It would have been a better race, and actually, this mod would work, would work much better at another track where the speeds aren't quite so high, I think. It's just such an extreme track, isn't it, with such high speeds and then such big braking zone. And... Um, Interesting point to note as well is that this game actually has a total top speed. It's a hard-coded top speed as far as I can work out. I think it's something like 485 kilometers an hour. Um, and the car just will not go any faster. Um, I discovered this before when I uh, gave it a bit more horsepower. And I've also discovered it on this track. But this track actually happens to work out beautifully that you just reach the limit as you hit the brakes into turn one. Um, and I've also geared the cars pretty much to the, to the same limit. So... Um, Oh, Perez almost murders us there. Just dives back onto the racing line. We just about managed to avoid him. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's an interesting point. I don't really know why that's that artificial limit, but there is. Um, but as I said, actually, on this track, it works out quite nicely anyway. And I remember my original point that I forgot a minute ago, but before I get onto that, we've run hugely wide and get stuck into those barriers. Unfortunately, this is those absorbing barriers. They just absorb you and just get caught on them sometimes, unfortunately, as that has lost us quite a few positions. We're still in the process of losing positions because we're not going to go straight back on the racing line. We're going to be quite courteous to the cars around us. Back down to P15 already. 
And uh, just quickly make the point, this is the third time I'm trying to make the point, is that I've not modified anything else in the car, so everything else is the same. The downforce levels, the power, everything else is absolutely identical, so the Ferrari will be better than the Williams. Um, but of course, the... Uh, oh, wow, I was up inside, everyone's all off the track here. But of course, uh, yeah, we have got better power, but power differences is... Uh, Less significant, shall we say, um, as there's no drag anyway, so the power's not quite so... Power difference between the top teams and bottom teams isn't quite so big. Back up to P10 then after that turn one issue. And getting also down again just about as Carlos Sainz went all the way off the track and we managed to dive at the inside, get the undercut and move all the way up to P8. We have got Daniel Ricciardo up next and I wonder what sort of mistake he's going to make. So that's pretty much how it's been going. We not really need to make many proper uh, overtaking maneuvers, as we, such as the... Uh, such as the handling of the AI's low drag, and as I said, I'm actually quite impressed uh, with the low drag, so I can't uh, slate them for it. It's quite extreme conditions. I put them under here, trying to get it all so down, which we just about managed to do. We run a little bit wide, but we do uh, manage to make that work. And we have got Daniel Ricciardo up next. As I said, we're gaining on him. We are definitely faster than the AI. Um, I think just because we've been able to make better apexes, even our own teammate, we're, we're quicker than. Oh, just as I say, we're able to make better apexes. I run usually wide, but. I managed to bring it back onto the track. I think this might still be a purple lap, potentially. It isn't, actually. Not a purple lap. So there's someone out there that's going quicker than me. And this will be uh, our final little bit of the video then, as oh, we actually end up getting hit. Someone just flies to the back of us there. So we have to spin it back around, back down to P12. But I suspect we're about to gain quite a lot of positions back, going around the outside. Oh, actually, Carlos Sainz, once again, though, did that earlier in the video. Just reverses straight into us. But I guess he wasn't to know that we're going to go on the outside of the track. Back up to P8 then. And I think that that is where we will call time on the video. Enough carnage. And the racing isn't really good enough to, to watch some proper races, which is why I just did a few restarts for you guys. Anyway, I found this video really interesting regardless. It was just certainly a bit of fun doing 485 kilometers an hour in a Formula 1 car. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe. And I thank you for watching.